our search. Pretty silly looking for something that's not around here. Yep, pretty silly. Yep, silly. That secret lake doesn't sound like much fun. If it was, it'd be around here, and it's not. Do you really think we'll ever find it? Yes, little sister. We'll find it. They traveled on for many days, and each day brought them closer to the snow-capped mountains. Then one day, they came upon a coyote sitting under a tree. Ho, brother wolf. Where are you going with that little blind mouse on your back? We're on our way to the sacred lake to ask the great spirit to help my little mouse sister. Well, why don't you stop and visit for a while? You both look hungry, and I just made some soup. My camp's just behind this tree. Because they were very hungry, they accepted Coyote's offer and joined him for dinner. After they had finished their soup, Coyote decided to play a trick on them. He sent Wolf down to the stream to wash the bowls so he could be alone with Little Mouse Sister. Tell me, Little Sister, have you been traveling a long time? A very long time. You're the first person we've seen since we visited with the otters. They'd never heard of the Sacred Lake. Have you ever heard of it? Sure, I've heard of it. I even know where it is. You do? Sure. Say, how well do you know that wolf? I know him very well. He's very kind. If he's so kind, why is he taking you in the wrong direction? The great wolf knew about Coyote and his tricks, and so he quickly washed the bowls and doubled back. He was standing behind the tree, listening. But we're on the good red road. Yeah, sure. Listen, I don't think that wolf means you any good. He's probably out to get some reward from the great spirit for pretending to help you out. I'd be glad to take you to the sacred lake. I even know a shortcut. Just then, the wolf re-entered the camp. There are no shortcuts. I see you're still up to your tricks. Is it you who is seeking a reward from the great spirit? Well, now that you mention it, things haven't been going very well lately. It couldn't hurt. That wasn't very nice. Didn't mean any harm. Come, little sister. We must be on our way. Thank you for dinner, Coyote. Yes, thank you. The great wolf and little mouse sister continued on their journey, traveling night and day. Then one day, when they were very close to the snow-capped mountains, they met the great horned owl leaning on his cane by the side of the trail. Hello! Who's that? The great horned owl. Uh-oh. Owls are bad luck, especially for mice. Well, not always. Some people say they're very wise. They're supposed to know just about everything. Yes, yes, that's very true. I can see that you're a very intelligent wolf. As for your little mouse friend, tell her not to worry. I gave up hunting a long time ago. And anyway, I've just eaten. Where are you headed? We're searching for the sacred lake. Sacred lake? Sacred lake? Hmm. If you're talking about that big pond some folks call Sacred Lake, it's just up the mountain, there a ways. Have you seen it? Of course I've seen it. Do you think I'm blind? I've flown over it a thousand times. It isn't anything special. Why in the world would you want to go there? We've been following the Good Red Road on our way to the Sacred Lake to ask the Great Spirit to help my little mouse sister. You see, she is blind. Well, 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 of course she is. Good Red Road, eh? My boy, I haven't heard anybody talk like that for ages. Where have you been? This is the scientific age. What your little friend there needs is a transplant. No, thanks. We already did that. We'll be on our way now. Well, if you're going up there to look for some great spirit, you're going to be mighty disappointed. Boy, I've been over that lake a thousand times. 
and I've never seen a great spirit. And I know just about everything. I read books. The great wolf and little mouse sister thanked the great horned owl for his advice and continued on their way. Several days later, when it seemed like they could hardly go another step, they came over a little crest on the mountainside, and as they looked down below, the great wolf saw the most beautiful lake he had ever seen. My beloved sister, we've come to the end of our journey. If you could only see this beautiful lake. But I can see it in my heart. I think I'd like to walk the rest of the way. So she took hold of the great wolf's tail and they walked to the edge of the sacred lake. The great wolf reached into his pouch and took out tobacco to make his offering. First, to Father Sky, in honor of the great spirit and all of the old people that had gone on into the spirit world. Then to the west, from where comes thunder and lightning, and asked those powers to help his sister. He then turned to the north, from where comes the white snow, and called the powers of that direction to help her. Then to the east, from where comes the red sunrise, and called upon the powers of the new mornings. Then to the south, from where new life comes, and called upon those powers. And finally, he offered his tobacco to Mother Earth, that brings forth and sustains all life, and he asked them all to help his sister. Then he leaned down and kissed the little mouse sister goodbye. I've done all that I can, little sister. The rest you must do yourself. Remember that the good creator speaks to each one of us in his own time and place. Thank you, great wolf brother. Thank you, beloved sister, for your generous gift. If you need me, just call, and I'll come back. Then the great wolf bounded down the mountain and out of sight. As the little mouse sister stood there, patiently waiting, she asked the great spirit to look after the otters, who were always too busy playing to think about anything else. And she asked that Coyote be forgiven for his trickster ways. And she asked that the great owl be given true sight and wisdom to balance out his book learning. And for her wolf brother, whom she loved very much, she asked a special blessing. Just as she had finished her prayer, she heard a voice say, Beloved granddaughter, jump. And she jumped. Jump higher. And she jumped higher. The third time the voice said, Jump higher, my beloved granddaughter. And she jumped. And finally the voice said, Little granddaughter, jump and reach for the heavens. Then she jumped high as she could, and suddenly she felt herself soaring above the earth. And the voice said, Sacred one, open your eyes. When she opened her eyes, she found that she had become the mighty eagle, and she screeched in happiness. Then the creator of all good things said, Granddaughter, because you have been so kind, loving and compassionate, and have shared the best you had to help another find life and understanding. From now on, and forevermore, you shall be the sacred eagle, and you will fly above all the people's horizon, and shall be assigned to them. And that's the story of how Little Mouse Sister became the mighty eagle, the eagle of love, understanding, and compassion. <laughs>